Hey, what's up Nexus crew and welcome back. Today, we have a selection of some of the worst killers to come out of a land that us Westerners know little about and have limited access to. China. China censors the internet more than almost any other country in the world. There, searches are filtered, sites are blocked, unwanted news is deleted, and emails are monitored. And thanks to this strict censorship over the press and the internet, serial killers and their horrifying deeds rarely make the news. But don't you worry, because Nexus has you covered. Chen Yongfeng killed 10 people in Wenzhou in Zhejiang province in China between February and May of 2003. His victims were his competitors in the garbage collecting trade. These men would sift through trash to find any usable material which they could later resell. It wasn't an extravagant life, but it was enough to survive. But when business became tough, Chen concocted a plan to eliminate the competition. He began inviting his competitors to his home, where, under the cover of his loud music, he would ambush them with a knife and ruthlessly stab them to death. He would then dismember them before dumping the body parts in different places across the city. News of his murders and arrests instilled fear in the people of Wenzhou, who began to look at outsiders with suspicion. And if not for a chance encounter when police officers knocked on his door to ask him to move a bicycle parked outside his house, he may never have been caught. When Chen opened the door, the police officers noticed blood states on Chen and near the entryway. They entered to investigate and found that the home was virtually covered with the blood of his latest victim, who incidentally was also the owner of the bicycle. Police recovered a total of 229 body parts from Chen's victims in dumpsters around the province. They filled a reported 29 body bags. Chen's killings were motivated by theft. He had stolen 10,000 yuan, about the equivalent of $1,600 from his victims. He was, however, ordered to pay nine times that amount to the relatives of his victims as funeral expenses, and the Wenzhou City Intermediate Court sentenced him to death. Between 1999 and 2001, Duan Guocheng killed 13 women in Hubei Province in central China. The first killing occurred in April, when he attacked a 24-year-old university student with the intention of robbing her. It's unclear how exactly, but the woman would die as a result of this altercation. And this would be the beginning of Duan's killing spree. Duan targeted younger women. All of his victims were in their 20s. He would ambush them at night, sometimes sexually assaulting them before taking their lives. He had initially began targeting women walking alone in dark streets and unlit alleys. But soon, his confidence would grow, and he began attacking them in their homes. His next victim would be found with more than 30 stab wounds. While the killings lasted in the city of Wuhan, women began cutting their hair and stopped wearing red dresses because there were rumors that the killer targeted women fitting that specific profile. This earned Duan the name, the Red Dress Killer. Duan had previously been sentenced to five years for robbery in the 90s, and he spent most of his teenage years in a juvenile home. After his arrest and imprisonment, this led police to believe his killing spree was the result of his lonely teenage years and low esteem issues due to his physical weakness. Wang Fang took the lives of eight people, seven of whom were members of her extended family. In order to accomplish this task, she used a potent rat poison called Duxiang, which had been banned in China since 1991 because of its overall danger to the public. But the most unbelievable fact about this case is that the killings could have been stopped much sooner, but Wang's family members never reported the murders to police because they believed that the house in which they were living was haunted and that those who had died had genuinely met with a supernatural end. Wang was a jealous woman, so much so that she killed one of her nieces in 1996 by putting poison in a drink she made for the young girl. She committed this unthinkable crime because she felt her mother-in-law preferred the girl to her own daughter. Two months later, she poisoned another niece because she felt the girl's mother disrespected her and her husband. Then, in 1999, another boy would face her wrath because his father, a relative of Wang, had an argument with her sometime earlier. Wang would go on to poison four more family members, including her parents-in-law. 
She was finally caught after she poisoned her 57-year-old lover and aroused suspicion from the man's family who later went to police. She said she killed him, according to her, because he always failed to keep his promises. In 2003, Huang Yang confessed to murdering 25 young men and boys. His motive? He wanted to know what it felt like to be an assassin. He specifically targeted young males because older men were too vigilant and he thought killing females would make him less of a hero. He began killing in September 2001 by luring boys from video halls and internet cafes to his house under the guise of getting them jobs or funding their education. Wang had a strange ritual for his killings. He would tie the boys to a noodle processing machine he called the Intelligent Hobby Horse before suffocating them to death with a dirty rag. He kept their belts as souvenirs. Wang was arrested in November of 2003 after a would-be victim escaped and alerted the police. When the police finally tracked him down and entered his apartment, they found the decomposing bodies of 12 boys. Wang was convicted for 17 of the 25 murders he was charged with. He was sentenced to death during a three-hour-long trial in December of 2003. Over 300 people attended the trial, and the court even installed loudspeakers so that people outside could hear the proceedings. Wu Yang Dong killed 10 people in the cities of Shenzhen and Nanjing between 1999 and 2003, and his murders were motivated by one simple thing, cold, hard cash. His first victim was a girlfriend of his, whom he killed in the most gruesome way because she kept nagging him to get married. He took an axe to her and mercilessly hacked her apart before strangling her to death. The next day, he would kill her daughter, then dump both their bodies in a well, then go on to kill another girlfriend, stabbing her along with her sister to death in October 2001. After this, he went on to rob and kill three truck drivers, a cyclist, and one of his co-workers. The murders came to light in 2004 after he was sentenced to death for killing the husband of his girlfriend in 2003. Although Wu admitted to the murders, along with some robberies, he refused to plead guilty, claiming he wasn't the only one involved in the 2003 murder. And perhaps most chillingly, he also told the court that he couldn't stop after the first killing even though he knew he would be caught and sentenced to death. Song Jinghua killed nine women in Beijing between 2005 and 2007, solely because they resembled his brother's ex-girlfriend. He and his brother had robbed and killed a driver in Gongti several years earlier because of the victim's refusal to participate in their protection racket. His brother's then-girlfriend disappeared the day of the killing, only to reappear to testify against them in court, making Song believe that she was the one who had turned them in. His 18-year-old brother was given a death sentence, while he, who was 17, was given an 8-year sentence. He was released in 2002 and later met with Yan Jingguang, who assisted him with the murders. Because Song couldn't find his brother's ex, he would trick girls who resembled her into his car, then, at a remote location, he would strangle them to death. As the body count grew, they rented an apartment where they killed and dismembered the women. Song and Yan were arrested in November 2007 after killing a female neighbor who had seen Song trying to bury a woman's head. Song is reported as saying he found killing stimulating and knew he would be caught. He was executed in 2011. Taxi driver Lai Ping Ping killed seven people, four of whom were sex workers he lured to his house between November 2002 and April 2003. His crimes were fueled by jealousy. He harbored a deep resentment towards prostitutes and he targeted them because he believed they made money more easily than taxi drivers. He found it easy to pick them up at night, then drive to a deserted location to have sex with them. But afterwards, he would strangle them to death and dismember their bodies, then toss the remains in a garbage dump near his home. In 1995, after being fired from his job, he broke into the house of his former employer, Song Shui Tan, and stabbed him, along with his wife and daughter, to death. 
It was further alleged that Lai had set someone's house on fire, but this was never conclusively proven. He was arrested in June 2003 and sentenced to death in March 2004. His wife was also sent to prison for 15 years for helping him with the murders and keeping stolen property. Alternately dubbed the Taxi Demon and the Taxi Devil, Zhao Wen began his murderous spree after his wife had an abortion without consulting him. From July 2003 until he was arrested in November of the same year, he killed six women. He stalked the streets at night and would pick the women up in his taxi, then at a convenient location he would pull over and either choke them to death with his bare hands or strangle them with a rope. He dumped their bodies in wells or outside of town. Conveniently, Zhao kept a detailed diary of the killings, including the date of the murder and the place where he dumped the body, because he wanted to help police locate the bodies whenever he was caught. In the city of Anshan, where the murders took place, celebrations marked the news of Zhao's arrest. Residents could be seen and heard setting off fireworks and cheering in the streets. Taxi drivers also joined in the celebrations, as their business had been negatively affected since the killings because people had stopped taking taxis at night. Gong Rongbo sexually assaulted and killed six children in China's Hailujiang province between March 2005 and April 2006. He also lured and sexually assaulted five others, although he did not kill them. His victims were all lured from internet cafes and were aged between 9 and 16. He was arrested on February 28, 2006 when a would-be victim escaped and alerted police. Police arrested him at a nearby cafe and in his house they found four decomposing bodies which showed signs of sexual abuse. Children's clothes, scattered bones and over 10 pairs of children's shoes were also found in the house. Prior to these murders, he had spent 8 years in prison for crimes against a young girl. Although police could convict him for only six of the murders, forensic evidence showed that he might have killed as many as 20 children. He was sentenced to death. Zheng Kai Gu is described as a highly trained marksman and a master of disguise skilled at avoiding surveillance. Zheng, a former People's Liberation Army policeman turned serial killer and bank robber, is suspected of killing six people in southwest China starting in 2004. He is also implicated in a fatal shooting in 1995. His killings reached their peak in 2012 when he killed a man and robbed him of $33,000 outside a bank in Nanjing. Over 13,000 police officers and two helicopters were deployed to find him. Police mounted roadblocks and searched internet cafes, hotels, buses and trains. Male passengers wanting to travel over long distances with public transport were required to show their identity cards. Banks increased their security and armed policemen began escorting people who wanted to make large withdrawals. A reward of 200,000 yuan was initially offered to anyone who could give details that led to his arrest. This later increased to more than 1.9 million yuan. To this day, he remains free. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe out there.